Hi there, in this video we'll be integrating Firebase with NativeScript and Angular. We're simply just going to get the integration up and running in this video. We're not going to look at authentication or databases or anything like that. We just want to initialize Firebase inside of the app. So if you haven't already, you want to install NativeScript like so by running npm install native script dash g you will of course need android studio and xcode for this so do make sure that you have them installed before running the command after that we're going to create a new project and this is going to be called native script firebase we are going to run the template of native script template ng tutorial and we're also gonna set an app ID. Now, why are we setting an app ID? Well, because at the moment when we start our project, the app ID would be something like com.nativescript.nativescript Firebase. And while that's fine, and you can change that inside of package.json, we will need to be interacting with this app ID in a second. So I'm gonna set a custom one of io.paulhalladay.nsfire. So hit enter and this will go ahead and create the project and download the dependencies. After that, we are going to CD into native script Firebase. And then we're going to install the native script plugin Firebase. Let's add TNS plugin add native script dash plugin dash Firebase. And now we'll be prompted with a series of questions. We are going to be using iOS and we are going to be using Android. And I'm going to say no for most of the other questions. Let's save the selected configuration by typing yes. And you should, if you want to use the other things in your application, simply say yes or no, depending on the question. But it's not really that important if you do say yes or no at this point, because you can change this in the future. The next stage is to head over to the Firebase dashboard and this can be done by going to firebase.google.com and hitting go to console here at the top. Now you will need to be logged in with an appropriate Google account. So hit go to console. And then when we log into this Firebase dashboard, we can hit add project. We can fill in a project name such as native script Firebase. And we can also select the country slash region. After this, you can then hit create project to continue. So at this point, we need to hit add Firebase to your iOS app and add Firebase to your Android app. Let's now hit add Firebase to your iOS app and fill in the bundle ID that we created earlier. If you remember, this was io.paulhalliday.nsfire. You can give this a nickname inside of the dashboards. And if you have an app store ID, you can add that. Otherwise hit register app. And while there are four steps at the top here, the second step is all we need. We just need this Google service info.plist. So I want you to download this file by clicking on this button. And at this point after that, you can either hit the X or just click continue twice. Afterwards, our views should change and now we should see our iOS application here. I then want to hit add another app, but this time I want to add the Android application. We'll follow through with the same process by adding our package name and hitting register app. And then after that, we'll download the configuration file once again. So hit download Google services.json and then hit continue. We don't really need to do anything with this last step because the plugin handles all that for us. So now hit finish. Now that we have both of these files and we've set up Firebase over on the dashboard, we can go back to our application. So inside of the terminal, I'm going to run code dot to open this up inside of Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to open up the app folder which then contains this app resources for Android and iOS. I'm going to right click and reveal in Finder. And I'm going to drag the Google services.json over to the Android folder. And then I'm going to drag the Google service info.plist over to the iOS folder. So if we look back inside of our project, we should have this Google services.json under Android and the Google service info.plist under the iOS folder. We can now close these folders up 
and head over to our app module. Now there are many ways in which we could bootstrap our Firebase application. We could do it inside of main.ts. We could even do it inside of our app component if we want. But for now, I'm simply going to put this inside of our app module. We'll import Firebase and that will be equal to a require for the native script plugin Firebase. Once we have that, we can run firebase.init and firebase.init does take a configuration option. For now, we won't concern ourselves with that. We'll be looking at that in other lectures. And then we can say then, we know that if it did initialize without an error, we have Firebase initialized. But we know that if there was an error, we can log out error and then pass through that error. At this stage, we can then run the application. So if I open up my terminal, or if I even use the Visual Studio Code plugin for native script, we can then run TNS run iOS, and I'll just run this on iOS for now, but it will be the same for Android. Now, when you do run TNS run iOS, it may take a little time because it will need to install all of the dependencies. And another thing, you can only run this on a Mac. So if you're on Windows, then I'd run TNS run Android to check the status of the app. If your application has booted up and we do see my app at the top, that probably means that we haven't got an error. But what we can then do is check out our terminal. And our terminal should say at some point, Firebase initialized. And that means that we've done everything correctly. If we have this console.log inside of the terminal at this point, we can see that we have initialized Firebase correctly. So if you would like to see more Firebase content, let me know inside of the comments section below. I can add some more content for potentially authentication, database calls, that type of thing within the script. That would be awesome. Aside from that, I do have some Angular courses and Ionic courses over at paulhalliday.io. I do advise that you check that out. And more recently, I do actually have a subscription plan and that does allow you to subscribe and get all of the courses and future courses for one easy price per month. Oh, this you crazy mother...